Hello, a few weeks ago I filmed at the historic boat gathering at Ellesmere Port and in the comments on that video a few people said, are there such things as steam narrowboats? The answer is yes, but there are very, very few of them. Well today, here at the Anderton Boat Lift, the Canal and River Trust is having a steam festival and there is one steam narrowboat to be seen. And this is it, narrowboat Emily Ann. 58 feet long with Dutch barge styling, the boat is all steel and weighs 22 tonnes. She was built uh, in the course of sort of 89 to 90, and obviously ever since, initially by my father, who built her as a retirement project. And it turned out to quite a thing for the whole family, and I got interested, and subsequently my son got interested and turned into a graduate engineer, which you really need to be a graduate engineer to actually do the engineering for this boat. The heart of the system is this boiler, essentially a big kettle with a coal fire at its base. A hundred pipes inside the boiler draw heat up from the fire, turning the water in the boiler to steam. The steam goes through this pipe from the boiler to the engine. It's a compound engine, so that means it uses the steam twice. It has a high pressure cylinder and a low pressure cylinder. And all steam engines are what's called double acting. So unlike most internal combustion engines, the steam is valve fed onto the top of a piston and the bottom of the piston. And that's why uh, steam locos uh, on railways make, make a chuff, 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 because the little chuff is on the top, which is a smaller chuff because of the pistons, and the big chuff is on the bottom, which is uh, the whole piston area, which is what our boat does. And then, from the low pressure, the steam goes into the condenser, and the condenser uh, counterflows with the canal water and takes uh, the rest of the heat out of the mixture of the, uh, the steam water mixture, turns it into hot water, which then gets fed back into the hot well, which then gets fed by the boiler feed pump back into the boiler. So it's a circulating water system. Of course, a steamboat needs a decent sized space to store the coal that powers it. And this hatch on the roof is where the lumps are loaded into this bunker below but the amount is surprisingly little compared to something like a railway engine. She's a very much smaller engine than a steam loco. A steam loco will have a grate that might be uh, three foot by six foot. We've only got a round grate that's three foot diameter. So it's a much smaller system altogether. If we're steaming all day, it uses about four bags of coal. They're 25 kilo bags, so 100 kilos of coal. It takes about 10 days to refuel it, so we get a tonne at a time of the Welsh steam coal. It's wonderful stuff, exactly made for the job. It doesn't make much clinker, which is the unburnt bits of coal, and uh, the clinker doesn't stick to the fire bars, so you can rake it out nicely, and it makes very little soot, so it doesn't soot up your tubes. So it counts, in fact, as a smokeless fuel, even these days, on the smokeless fuel regs. Starting my diesel engine narrowboat was as simple as turning a key and off you go, but it's a bit of a longer process when you're powered by steam. From arriving on the boat to moving, if you're really working hard at it, it takes two hours. We have to rake out the fire um, to, to clear it all down and get all the non-burnt bits of coal, all the clinker out. Um, and then you have to layer a fire, which you need a much bigger fire than an ordinary house fire. After it's caught, it has to raise the steam. So we have 28 gallons of water, which obviously takes a, a while if you think about trying to heat a kettle on your gas cooker. So to get what we call lift off, which is the boiler has got up to boiling point, uh, often will happen within an hour. That's about halfway there, so after about two hours, uh, you, you can say, right, um, the ste we're at steaming pressure and we can go. And even once it's started, a steam engine takes a bit of effort to keep going. We 
have to look at it about every 10 minutes to a quarter of an hour. We do simple safety checks that the water level's right in all the places that it should be. And we also check up how the fire's doing and whether that needs a little bit of a stoke. Um, and sometimes we slightly top up the hot well, that sort of thing. But it only takes two to five minutes um, every sort of quarter of an hour or so. And then at the end of the day, when uh, you're letting the fire run down, you might be able to leave it for 20 minutes or half an hour. Obviously, in order to turn the propeller, the steam has to be coming out of the boiler at a fair old rate. And like any pressurised system, there are safety checks. Our blow-off pressure is 200 psi. So every year the boiler is tested to 200 psi and we know for sure that that's safe. Uh, and we have two safety valves which go off and let off an enormous amount of steam if it ever exceeds that. Uh, we can run down to about um, 80 psi. But obviously it gets less efficient, the wetter the steam is. We call steam wet when it's starting to get water in it, uh, which is when it's not properly superheated steam. So we like to run it between about 150 and 180 psi. There are other aspects of steam boating that make it more involved than with conventional craft, such as having to take the chimney down when you go under bridges, or as here, onto the boat lift and Catherine says it's not suitable for idle boaters. It's jolly good fun for anybody who thinks it's completely relaxing, doing nothing with a gin and tonic. Steamboating is not for you. But if, if you're a hands-on person who wouldn't really like to be on a sun lounger all week uh, and likes to be fiddling with things and doing things, it's just such fun. There's always something to fiddle with on Emily Anne.